<laughs> with you even though like I mean name some of the songs like to do with Dublin or like Leeson Street Blues or you know Bullwell Blues and uh, you collaborated with John Carney and you had like the, the two albums there's as much blues comes out of Dublin as anywhere else yeah. and why shouldn't they be called something something blues yeah like I, I walk down Bullwell quite a lot you yeah. know I mean, I'm not going to call it the Mississippi Blues, like, you know? Yeah. I'm from Dublin. I live in Dublin. <coughs> this is where I'm walking. It's the Bull Wall Blues. <laughs> actually the Beatles that got me into music but there's a little element of blues with what they do as well sure. especially in the early days but uh, the main man that brought me into blues here was uh, John Mayer especially all those um, albums he recorded with Eric Clapton and uh, Peter Green and Mick Taylor I presume you know about the, the Beano album I mean, the sound of Clapton's guitar and that, everyone's going, what the hell is that, you know? And I wanted to know about it as well. <laughs> <laughs> I think it had a massive influence on a lot of musicians, including Jerry McAvoy and a few others. They've all referenced that album. Like, it's amazing how influential that was in terms of Ireland, England's influence. Yeah, in those, you know? that's the Bible. Yeah. Okay. And the hard road, that's the epistle. <laughs> um, was there any blues musicians, I mean, as well as Clapton, that would have got your interest? Or? Oh yeah, I mean, there was uh, the British blues boom you probably heard mm. of. Ah, okay. There was a now pouring of bands over there, as there was here. Maybe not to the same extent, but there was uh, lots of bands from here as well as the UK. I mentioned a few from the John Mayer's Blues Breakers. Who always had interesting lineups, you know, yeah. and always brilliant lineups, and always had something to say and brought the blues into it. And he sort of directioned us, you know, people hadn't heard before. Very inventive man. Uh, over here we had, we were talking about Skid Row and the Sugar Shack and the Few and Granny's Intentions, bands like that, all um, virgin on the blues. And be able to go and see these guys live, which was, you know, which was great. Yeah. You know, Henry McCullough down in the Dogo. Oh, yeah. When he was with their parents, or the people, before it be, became their parents. He then went to, with the Joe Cocker. He was, was the only Irishman on, on, on yeah. Woodstock, yeah. He, he joined Joe Cocker, yeah. And okay. yeah. um, what was the blues music scene like? Um, around that time, you're talking late 60s, early 70s? Yeah, there, there wasn't that many gigs now for mm. man, but Slattery's of Cable Street was uh, a great instigator of bringing on new things and one of the new things was Larry Roddy, a guy called Larry Roddy mm. who started the Irish Blues Appreciation Society okay. And it would consist of uh, Larry had a tape recorder, a reel to reel. Yeah. And it could have been Morty Waters, it could have been Hell and Wolf, and he'd play a few tracks and then start, start talking about either Morty or Hell and Wolf, whichever guy he was playing, you know. Yeah. And 
you know, brought us into it. I'd never heard of these guys, you know, yeah. to that point. And then uh, we said, we're going to have some live music. And lo and behold, this voice came from the stairs. It was packed, you know, and Red Peters was sitting on the stairs and he started performing. Now tell me, honey, tell me, please, is my love a hard to please? And get ruggy in my knees, baby, it must be love. And it was like, it just <laughs> blew me head. It was ridiculous, you know. He was playing acoustic with two acoustic players, Cherry Doyle and Johnny Norris, as far as I remember at the time. So again, they brought me into the Victor's Irish guys doing this. Uh, equally as well, and there was Ed Dean was going around playing electric guitar, who was phenomenal, you know. Okay. So I was thinking, well, Jesus, if they're giving it a go, I'll give it a go. Yeah. <laughs> um, what was it? That's great that you had the Irish Blues Association because, like, that's like an early form of YouTube, if you know what I mean. Like, like oh, early... yeah, big time. Can you tell me maybe who you played with, uh, especially in your beginning? Beginning with, well, at the beginning it was uh, friends from Marino, Mick Hayes and Frank Brady. Mm. Before I started moving into bands, I suppose, th there was a couple of bands, but the um, the first sort of serious band that got involved with was Jangle Dangle, uh, which included Jimmy Faulkner. Mm -hmm. And uh, Jimmy was very generous to me and the way we played. And to be harmonies and so blues based, mm. you know. Yeah. But um, I don't know if we're out now blues band, but yeah. it's definitely blues based. And I love that band, you know, especially you play with Jimmy Faulkner, who yeah. was who was everyone's hero at the time, yeah. you know. Um, I was delighted to play with that, and later on, got to play with Red Peters himself. Yeah. What was that like? <laughs> That was brilliant. <laughs> there's a photo of you though, actually. Uh, there's a lineup of you, I think, in this. And, uh, I think you and Jimmy are, are in that picture as well. So yeah. Jimmy would have played as well at the same time you did, was it? Oh, with big your... time, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, what were the audiences like when they saw you guys? <laughs> they shocked. <laughs> <laughs> because well, they were used to show bands, I suppose, or something, and you guys would be kind yeah, of Yeah, that, that show band area was just about coming to a halt hmm. when all this other scene was starting up, okay. you know, and uh, we were lucky enough to be part of that scene that was yeah. that was crawling in. So we used to play quite regular with, with, uh, with Red. We played in, in, the, in the meeting place, which is a well-known haunt both for Irish musicians and blues sort of guys. Yeah. So there was a great uh, meeting of clans. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Very good. I know, but, then, but I mean, I think I even saw this in the Brendan Fingless interview. Like you were saying, like how an awful lot of the musicians just used to meet and gather around each other's houses and gas and just oh, jam yeah. a lot more. Like especially with Red, we weren't just a band; we were a gang, as I said. Okay. You know, we'd hang out with each other and. If Todd wants to do it, <laughs> <laughs> okay. not all good. <laughs> <laughs> such a thing as Irish blues music or not? Of course there is. There's, there's blues music period, you know. Mm. Um, it comes from everywhere. Mm. I don't think um, some guy just stood up in the cotton fields and said, I woke up this morning and got the blues all around my brain, you know. I think there's a lot more to it than that. Yeah. I think the, the culture of the 
the Celts especially and the Scottish and the, the violins, the mandolins that they brought over. And then it was all the slaves, the unfortunate slaves that were brought over, mm -hmm. it was horrendous. Mm -hmm. They were brought over from uh, Africa. They brought the rhythms into things. I, I'm, I'm nearly sure there was a mismatch of uh, minds around that time mm -hmm. where the melodies would have, I know that melody, like that's pretty similar to what we do here. Yeah. Okay. You'll find loads of them started out like that, you know. Sure. And what does blues music mean to you? Um, to me, it means a form of expression that I don't really form or I don't really see in other forms of music. Sure. Um, it gives you loads of time to get out there and... <laughs> Turn it up loud yeah. <laughs> and let it rip. Yeah. You know? <laughs> get it <laughs> whether you like it or not <laughs> um, do you have a favorite guitar that you know or a setup that you play or uh, pair that I play mm, yeah, yeah I suppose uh, Derek Nelson I don't know if you heard of Derek Nelson no. he's he makes guitars um, makes mandolins makes acoustic and electric guitars he made me a, a, this electric guitar in uh, 1978 oh. And I still use it to this day. I have a 335 as well. Yeah. And that becomes uh, for quieter gigs. Yeah. I like use that now. I love that idea. Yeah. yeah. Were there any other Dublin bands you mentioned off camera that you admired? I, I was talking about Ed Dean. He was in a band called Blues House. Yeah. And they were just superb. They really got the you know, the, the vibe. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, we'd be going around rubbing nicks off it. <laughs> <laughs> Taking notes. Like, yeah. Taking notes yeah. <laughs> Do you have any, like, uh, memories of maybe meeting up with uh, Gary Moore or Brush Shield in the Skid Row time? Or? Yeah, lots of the times we were like, I suppose, groupies. Mm. <laughs> um, we'd be bringing in their gear and stuff to Places like the CY down in Fairview and other halls, we'd follow them around the place. Yeah. Um, got to know Gary. I'm not saying we were best buddies, but mm. like we knew each other. Well. Um, once I was over in London, and he says, "Why don't you come down to where we?" Heard? He had a, the Gary Moore band at that time. He says, "Why don't you come down and we're, we're rehearsing down in this hall." And he let me play, do you know the Peter Green Les Paul? Yeah. He had it at the time. Oh, okay. And he let me play. Right. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, yeah, right. that, was, that was a big deal, like, yeah. yeah. We started a band called The Business, yeah. which was uh, Don Baker, Earl mm -hmm. Welch, Tommy Moore, and Fran Brain. And uh, we had a great time. That band had a, it depends what you call it, success, but we had a great success around Dublin and the, the band scene, the, the gigs that you could get in Galway and Galway mm -hmm. and Kilkenny and all those places and released a few singles and a couple of albums and you know we're still we're still sort of around kind of yeah. <laughs> um, there's still business going on yeah, yeah, still, yeah. um but i saw a ticket um bb king with support from, from ourselves 
Yeah. Yeah. Can you tell me about that? Really? Yeah, yeah. I was sort of like a big hero of mine, yeah. obviously, you know. Yeah. And uh, we were the, the promoter asked, would we be interested in doing support? I mean, he hardly had the words out of his mouth. <laughs> yeah. And it was, yes, of course, you know. Oh. So we did play support before we were here, which was a big deal for me. Yeah. You know. And like it would have been a big deal even for the Irish fans, I suppose. You know, it's like local yeah. group, you know, su supporting like the master or the king of, of, of blues. Like, you know, I mean, it's it's brilliant that you got to do that. I, I, I always delighted, yeah. yeah. You didn't get to meet him, did you? Or did you? Met him briefly. Okay. It wasn't a big conversation now. Yeah. Uh, He's a gentleman, and yeah. we got to meet all the bands. Jeez, they're all big guys, like you know, <laughs> with the the gold dripping off their wrists, and <laughs> the real deal, <laughs> like you know, they're great. Oh, brilliant, brilliant. <laughs> um, the business, and you were still going into the business, but and you mentioned about um, Red Peters. Were you doing that at the same time, or was that a different time? Yeah, good question. But there was a crossover where yeah. I was doing both. Okay. <clears throat> we used to play in Slattery's with the business in the afternoon. Then I'd go up to the meeting place and play with Red. And somebody oh. said to me, Do you know something? You've got the best gig in town. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that, that is pretty good. And I felt it did, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, Playing with both of those bands at the same time was great. Yeah. There you know? was yeah. always great musicians from the yeah. north. There always was. Coming down from the, the few were a band. That came down lots of times, sort of the method. Yeah. Um, they get mentioned a lot. Actually. So was, uh, I mean, Henry McCullough and, and came yeah. down with the people initially, mm. but uh, he soon made his name yeah. known down here, you know. In terms of um, Rob Strong, Jerry Quigley, and Brush Shields really, really rate you as a guitarist, you're seen as a musician's musician. What what made you so good, do you think? Because I, I paid them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right, they all, oh, when I was in them, yeah, yeah, they all got their checks. <laughs> no, but like, I mean... I knew you were going to be talking, so... <laughs> <laughs> what was it? But like, I mean, Peter Green especially, I think, was... Oh, he's a big hero of mine. Yeah. His, his touch on the guitar is just so beautiful. In my younger days, when the early Mac were formed, and there were certain tunes that he played, and, and I thought, how did he know I was feeling like that? I thought he wrote them just for me, you know? Because yeah. <laughs> B.B. King said, like, when he heard Peter Green, it gave him chills. Yeah. You know, so the same. and like even for me, like I mean, you're even just playing like the riff and I know it's a simple riff, but even like to need your love so bad. Oh, it's yeah. gorgeous. It's beautiful. It's, it's beautiful. It's and it's so simple like it's answers, it's just beautiful. Yeah. How do you think people feel when they listen to you? And Noel Bridgman had said, you know, that that they change people, they take people out of the the dark. You see even with the COVID when the blues bands are coming back like it's such a release for so many people yeah, like absolutely like it's certainly you can express sadness yeah but by the same token you can express happiness yeah. it's not just a, a one trick pony it's um it's it's a <laughs> it's a vast scale is the blues yeah and different ways of playing the acoustic blues, country blues, rock and roll blues, you know. And they have all done it in various different ways. And loads of them would be here for the next 10 weeks, yeah. talking about all the people that have played it in, yeah. in different ways, you know. And it's just lovely gigging to be just part of all that, yeah. you know. Yeah. Imagine I'm involved with all this and it's... Uh, should be nothing to do with you. Mm. You're just a messenger along the way, you know. And you get brought down to, to your toes sometimes. We were rehearsing in 
um, the meeting place. And while we were practicing, uh, <coughs> there was this girl sweeping up, just tidying up the place, you know. And when we were finished, she said, Jesus, you sound like cats screaming. <laughs> do you, last question, um, do you have uh, any advice for um, anybody starting out, I suppose, in terms of yeah, learning? The same as everything, stick with it. Yeah. You know, if you're a real beginner, that sometimes those cards can be painful. Yeah. But once you get over that, and it depends what you want to put into it, yeah. you know. Yeah. I think that's what you'll get out of it. Sure. If you're prepared to work hard, you will get results. And sometimes just what, guys just want to sit at home and play. Yeah. And that's perfectly cool. And, mm. You know, there's no rules. Mm. I think the playing of the music is the most important, you know. Mm.